Hi, this is Haley McLaughlin with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Seth Willey, running for Portland City Commissioner, Position 4. Welcome, Seth. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Seth, please tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all candidates for this office. Yeah, um, so I'm Seth Woolley, running for Portland City Commission, and I grew up in the Northwest on a rural lot in a mobile home. And uh, my grandmother lived in the Vanport area of Portland during the war, as she worked as a welder, and my grandparents moved to the Northwest from their farm in Minnesota. I studied computer science at Willamette University in Salem and became a software engineer for technology startups in scientific computing, geographic, and spatial mapping technology, turn-by-turn -turn navigation software, and the delivery, transportation, and logistics systems. I've been involved, involved with politics uh, for two decades, focusing on election and campaign finance reform, environmental protection against air and water pollution that can damage not just nature, but public health making people less resilient against infections such as the novel coronavirus. And recently I've become known as the traffic cop of city elections, helping to both get campaign finance reform on the ballot and enforcing local election laws. My father was a data analyst for dozens of election law complaints, which have resulted in thousands of dollars of fines, and some are still in active investigation and litigation, which I continue to defend in court. Because of my background as a database systems engineer, I've done countless public records requests extracting data from disparate systems and merging them together. Many years ago, I realized this had not been done regarding polluter data, and I had to threaten to sue the state to get public records at a reasonable cost. Once I had access to the state's polluter data, I realized how damning the secret was, and I founded an educational nonprofit called Portland Clean Air. I cross-correlated that data with data from eight different agencies and helped neighborhoods build local reports about their local polluters, and empowered them to get to work on getting stack emissions cleaned up. Great. Thank you. The COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Yeah, it, it's important to note that by the time I take office at the start of the new year, the pandemic may be in a second winter wave. We may have widespread antibody testing, potentially even a vaccine but it may still be with us, as well as a new culture of social interaction. Many spending cuts will have already been made and many more small businesses will be closed. Our economy will be in a gradual recovery as it adapts to a new normal, where technology and delivery will be the primary mode of retail. Will people shift to home delivery of fresh fruits and vegetables for the long term? Will our sidewalks be wide enough to reduce impacts from future zoonotic viruses? Will offices encourage workers to work from home and will our development patterns be entirely different with you know, sidewalks uh, being very narrow as they are. My wife's an elementary reading teacher and her job is now taking place over video conferencing. And for many children, the school is a safe haven. And for parents, it was daycare in many respects. At this point, we should have a lot more questions than complete answers and good leadership will enable adaptation and support long-term resilience as we come out of this crisis. Thank you. If we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? So uh, I, I have a background in transportation, so the, the Bureau of Transportation uh, would be very fascinating to me. Uh, one of the reasons I'm in this race, though, is be, because the, in, the incumbent has essentially gone to war with those neighbors, or with neighborhood associations, uh, because they have a diversity of opinions. And as a progressive, as progressive as most Portlanders, I have an approach that, that treats citizens, or an approach that treats citizens with disrespect is not going to convince anybody that you have the correct way forward. I consider that the office should be used to build and empower everybody, not just a vehicle for the expression of my own opinion, regardless of whether what others think. And uh, to that end, I, I approve of reforming the commissioner form of government so people don't have to do these uh, you know, bureaus assignments. Uh, 10 years ago, I helped reform the subcommittee that started evaluating options at the Porter Char Portland Charter Review Commission. And the council at the time was adamantly opposed to that work, so it didn't go anywhere. But now we have uh, another Charter Review Commission coming up, and I'm excited to be able to appoint people to that board that would be pro-reform. And uh, The commissioner system is terrible because it requires at-large elections, constituents have a hard time getting heard, 
These two commissioners using their bureaus as pawns in vote trading, often for special interests that have been the major funders of local elections until we passed campaign finance reform with 87% of the votes. And I worked to help draft that measure. Thank you. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police community relations, the use of deadly force, and officer accountability? So I, I stand in solidarity with those who've pointed out the problems in Portland's system of police accountability. There are a number of common sense reforms that many other cities have done and accountability organizations have pushed for. I would work in good faith with the Portland Police Association to ensure that they are protected from the severest cuts in the future in exchange for increased accountability measures in the union contract. And we have to remember that police officers are also government officials and we need to hold them accountable. You may have noticed that Portland's ability to recruit officers has been hard hit by recent scandals and the PPA would tell you that it's because the city's hostile to them. But and while there could be some truth to that, uh, what I see as more relevant is that the PPA has failed to build trust with the public. And one, one reason officers join forces is to help people and get respect for that help. And many police forces with solid accountability systems are having no problems recruiting officers. And my data-driven and evidence-based approach to solving problems professionally and politically will be important in successfully negotiating much needed reforms. What those reforms look like in the end will depend on what set of reforms are accepted as they work together in the larger system. So I can't say what in particular it will look like, but I'll use the community advocacy organizations as system reviewers to ensure whatever negotiation, negotiations succeed will have broad community and officer support. Thank you. The city's park system faces serious financial challenges, even more so since the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved park system? So that's a great question. And our, our parks and community centers uh, have been under financial pressure for a long time, much of that caused by prior mismanagement, ultimately caused by the influence of campaign donations. And focusing on good government is essential to prevent problems like this in the future. But uh, I believe our open air parks uh, will be able to weather much of the storm because people will adapt to social distancing and the, the, the and small gatherings will likely continue there. Uh, community centers are another issue. Um, Again, we should have a lot more questions than answers at this point if we were to come up with good answers long term. But uh, I believe the public will step up to increase funding to community centers across the city. And we, we may be able to increase revenue through significant private funding as these are near and dear to people's hearts and, and, and neighbors. And that funding could be directed to ensuring every community center is remodeled to support good hygiene practices, increasing public hand washing stations using brass and copper hardware on frequently touched items, or making entrances not require touching in the first place. And so I have hope and faith that we will come together and solve these difficult problems. And I thank you for these questions. Thank you, Seth. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.